Okay, here we are on video two of our series on how to build a $5 million portfolio um, of real estate assets with really nothing more than saving for your first house. Now that sounds probably like a gimmick or whatever, and really it's not, um, although there's a little bit more to it, of course. So first I would like to apologize. After watching my last video, I realized I say spoiler alert a lot and it was rough to hear. So I promise that that's the only time you're gonna hear me say that on this video. So here we go. If you're just now tuning in, what we've been talking about is how to build a $5.6 million portfolio, essentially buying a $300,000 house every two years for 10 years. So five houses in 10 years. Now, the reason this is so doable, but unfortunately what most people don't know, is that when you're converting a primary residence into a rental property, um, there's nothing extra special you have to do, right? If you buy an investment property, you have to have a pretty significant down payment. Typically, a good down payment on an investment home is gonna be about 25%. When you're purchasing a primary residence for yourself, you can do that. There's all kinds of programs, but for the sake of this argument, I'm gonna say 5%, right? So if you're purchasing a $300,000 house, you're gonna save 5% of the purchase price or $15,000 to afford said house. Now, here's step two. So on step one, we talked about buying your first house. Step two, you are in your first house and you did that because you saved $15,000 to be able to acquire that. That is not going to be the only time in the history of existence that you will be able to save $15,000 for a big expense. But here's the difference. What people typically do is they save up money for their first house. They move in. The house appreciates, and so do their tastes. And so seven years from then, that's actually average, seven years from then, they go to sell their house. And they say, look at all this money that's in the house. We can use that money to then go buy a nicer house without really having to use any of our money. And you can do that. And what you're doing is essentially just buying a luxury, like, right? Like a, a car in that it's not really gonna do anything for you in the short term. When you sell it, unlike a car, it will have appreciated, that's great. So buying real estate in general, I'm already giving you a thumbs up. Um, but you can build wealth with the same effort that you used to save for your first house, right? You worked hard, you saved diligently, you didn't buy Starbucks as often, whatever it was to save your money, and all you need to do is duplicate that. It's not sexy. Nobody loves saving money. Nobody loves having to skip on maybe some luxuries or whatever the case is. But at the end of the day, if you wanted to save $15,000 every two years, that's $700 a month. I should have done this calculation before I started this video. Let me see if I can think through it. If you save $700 in 30 days, that would be like, what, $25 a day? Maybe. Probably pretty close to that. $25 a day. That's like eating, well, for me, that's like Chipotle and a Starbucks and a Wow Wow Lemonade. Actually, that's exactly what that is. If I didn't eat Chipotle, Starbucks, and Wow Wow Lemonade all in one day, which is very doable for me, um, then over the course of two years, I would be able to purchase a $300,000 house with a $15,000 down payment. Here's the catch in this whole story is you have to be pretty content with buying a similarly $300,000 property every two years. A lot of people purchase homes in a step up type fashion. And, and in my very, very first video, not step one, but in my first video introducing this, I talked about that that's really what happened to Dustin and I. We purchased our first house and we turned it into a rental property. And what we did in purchasing that second house is we stepped up. And then we kept that house as a rental property and we moved into the house we're in today. The problem is every single time we did that, we increased what we were buying, which depending on your area makes it less perfect of a rental property. And so the property that we're sitting in today, we will no longer be able to do our kind of step up fashion. We're tapped out if we had spent some more time slowly growing that house that we have gotten into instead of making bigger steps up, we would have been able to do the five houses in uh, 10 years that I'm discussing. So you move into your house, you stay there two years while you save up money and you buy your next house. The key to all of this is quite literally saving money. So when I said I was gonna put a series together, when I was preparing for this video today, what I realized is there's not a lot to it. What 
what it's all about is just the hard work and really more so being purposeful, being purposeful where you're putting that money, right? You get your tax return back and you could go shopping or you could sock that away to buy a house or you, um, you get a stimulus check and maybe you're in the position where you didn't really need it. So instead of going out and buying a new computer or a new cell phone or whatever the case is, you put that into your savings account or you get a bonus at work or you get cash money from your grandma on your birthday and you put that into a savings account, right? All of that stuff adds up and it's not fun, but at the end of it, remember what we talked about, $5.6 million. So how we came up with that number as we said, you buy one house, let's say every four years, and every four years, every year it appreciates by 4%. Now Phoenix last year appreciated by about 19%, but it's a good example. So every year it appreciates by 4%. Then year house two appreciates for 4% for eight years. House three appreciates by 4% for six years. Keep doing that math because I'm gonna screw it up. Um, house one, two, three, four, and five. And then on the way, you're also making money off of those houses. So not only do you have the appreciation of it over time, but you also have the cash that's going into your pocket with each additional investment property you tack into your portfolio. Now the icing on the cake that we really don't dig into as much is while the tenants are there, they're also paying down what you owe on the house. And so when you get to year 10, you're gonna be a third of the way through the loan on your first house and so on and so forth. Um, bonus points, if you take all that rent and then you just put it as extra principal payments on the first house and just continue to pay them off. A good rule of thumb, even if you never employ any of this, is if you make one, I believe it's one extra payment every year on your mortgage, you'll cut seven years off the life of your loan. Seven years, seven years, seven years is like, I don't know, a fifth of the time or something like that. So even if you employ none of this, just take out that one little nugget. If you have a $1,500 um, monthly mortgage payment, spend an extra $125 a month towards your principal and you will shave seven years off the life of your loan. And if you're a lender watching this, you can correct me and let me know if I beefed that up, but I'm 98% positive that's accurate. All right, so recap. Save for a house, buy a house. Save for a house, buy a house, save for a house, buy a house, save a house, buy a house, save for a house, buy a house. Keep doing that until you have a $5.6 million real estate portfolio in 10 years. Your future self will appreciate you for it. Your kids and their kids and the world around you will be so blessed to learn from all that you've done and look up to all that you're doing. Um, if you're looking to build something like this seriously, I'd love to chat with you. It's really something that these videos are cute and kitschy and have a little bit of information, but you're gonna need some tactical boots on the ground help to get there. I mentioned you're gonna need a great lender. We've got resources for that. Eventually you're gonna need a great agent. I've got resources for that and I'm looking forward to helping. All right. Have a great day. Bye.